Welcome to our live training session. We're gonna be taking a look at how to calibrate and tune our Honda Civic Si on the Mtron KV8 standalone system. Let's jump to some details about our vehicle. We're gonna find that we have a K24 engine swap performed on our chassis. Now the engine was rebuilt before we've swapped it into our vehicle. The engine has 12 and a half to one compression pistons, aftermarket connecting rods. We have upgraded valve train. We have stock cams, a 50 degree VTC gear, as well as a upgraded type S oil pump. So on the uh, induction side of things with our engine, we have Kinsler 64 millimeter individual throttle bodies. We have RDX 410cc injectors, an upgraded in-tank fuel pump, a zero to 100 PSI fuel pressure sensor, as well as a flex fuel sensor mounted into our fuel system. On the exhaust side of things, we have a header back exhaust, and we're gonna be primarily calibrating this on 93 octane. So we're gonna be looking at the entire base map creation process in this tutorial, going through setting up all of our inputs and outputs, making sure that they're all valid and calibrated properly. Then we'll move into the future tutorials looking at doing the actual tuning and calibration process. So without further wait, let's jump into our first tutorial at looking at how to set up and build our base map process and working with this alpha end strategy with our Mtron standalone system. Welcome to our live training session here. We're gonna be taking a look at creating a base map in this tutorial, specifically looking at setting up our inputs and outputs and all the configuration details to begin our base map creation process. Now we're gonna be splitting the base map tutorial into two separate parts. The next tutorial will be looking at setting up all of our two dimensional and three dimensional tables, such as our fuel or spark timing or variable cam control, idle control, et cetera. There's a lot to discuss between these two tutorials. Let's jump in here and take a look at where we're at and then we'll talk about what we need to do here to begin our base map creation process. So I'm sitting in my vehicle right now. I am not connected to my Mtron KV8 box. So in this case, we're gonna be in the offline mode. We're gonna create our base map in the offline mode. And then once we've created the base map, we can get online with the Mtron and then we can upload the calibration file at that point in time. So that's not gonna be until the third tutorial till we get online and we start to do the upload process and go through checking the inputs and outputs functionality. And then we're also gonna be then getting the engine to fire up and run in that tutorial. So let's jump in here right now. We can see on the laptop screen, I have my Mtune software open. This is the latest version that was just released um, in August. So it's August 1st was the release of this software version. Uh, so we're gonna be taking a look at any of the other functionality changes from previous tutorials, there might be things that change in the software. There was a lot of updates rolled out into this software version, but the software look is a little bit different than the previous versions of the software. So it might be a little bit different as you're watching and following along with what we've shown in the training course. So moving in here, I'm gonna go into the open cal file and that's gonna allow me to open up a calibration file to begin the base map creation process. Now we're gonna be selecting one of the base files that Mtron provides for a KV based box. So we have a KV8 box, we're gonna be selecting that here in our options. So we're gonna to go to open cal file and then we're gonna go in here to our Mtron cal file folder and then we can see there's a bunch of different options here for KV samples. There's also an SL sample file. Now we have a KV box. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and select here to build my base map from. I'm gonna go here to the KV sample file and click open and now we can see it's gonna be opening up and now we see that file has been opened. Now this file will not run my K-series four cylinder engine. This file is meant for a completely different engine, so we'll find we have a lot of setup and configuration details to go through in this specific base map tutorial. So let's jump in and let's start that process. So moving into our screen here, what we're gonna have to go is skip over the tuning option and move into the configure. Now you'll, you'll notice if you've paid attention to the main training course and to the, all the other live training tutorials I've offered with the Mtron, the look of the software is different. Everything looks a little bit different here. Again, that's the latest version of the software. We're gonna go here to configure and then in here, we're gonna go across all of our different options that we have to select and to work with here. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into the engine setup. And then in here, we're gonna go into the engine main. Now this is where we need to program the details specific for the basic functionality of our Mtron. So it's understanding what kind of engine it's going to control, so the number of cylinders, the engine displacement, so things of that nature. So let's look in here. So the cylinders will be a four cylinder engine. So that's what we have here. The engine size, it's not a 2000 cc engine. Now we have a K24 engine, which is gonna be an 87 and a half millimeter bore and a 99 mil stroke. Now we can figure out what this engine size or displacement is going to be and CCs. We actually can use our training course Excel calculator to be able to figure this out. So I have that open right here so we can go in and I have that right here. So the Mtron course worksheet. 
In my third option here in our worksheet, we have engine displacement. And then in here, I can punch in the bore, the stroke, and the number of cylinders and get the engine displacement in cc's, which the software is set up for, not liters or cubic inches. It's going to be cc's. So in this case, I have an 87 and a half mil bore and a 99 mil stroke, and I have a four cylinder engine. We're going to be left with a 2,381 cc engine. That's what we need to enter into the software to be accurate. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's jump back into the Mtune software and we're going to enter that in. So 2,381, enter. The engine type is going to be a four-stroke engine. So we don't have a two-stroke engine or a rotary engine we're dealing with. So we're going to be selecting our option here as four-stroke. Now the next options here, we have a cranking RPM exit and a crank RPM entry. This is going to be telling the Mtron under cranking conditions when to exit and consider the engine to be in a run state or when to consider the engine to enter into a cranking state to be able to apply the cranking spark, cranking fuel, and prime pulse fuel to get the engine to fire off and run. So we're going to say here 90 RPM and higher, the engine's going to be considered to be in an actual cranking state below that. We're going to consider the engine to not be in a situation or a state where the Mtron will go in and apply the fuel and spark timing and actually fire the coils and injectors to get the engine to fire up and run. So in this case, 90 RPM is fine. The maximum here, 350 is also fine. So above 350 RPM, the Mtron is going to consider the engine to be running, and then it's going to be applying the after start, warm up fuel, and then the normal air and fuel modeling that goes on within the programming here. So these thresholds will work for pretty much any engine. So we'll keep the default values and we can tweak and adjust as we need, but that's gonna be fine to kind of get things going here. Now, there's also an engine speed valid or invalid. So it's gonna say if we're above 60 RPM, that's considered the engine RPM pickup from the crank sensor to be a valid reading and then 40 RPM and below, it's considered to be invalid. So this is gonna be starting that process of allowing the Mtron to see the crank signal and to validate, to determine if that's a reasonable cranking RPM or not to be able to do something, again, with firing off the coils, the injectors, looking at the cam and crank pattern, giving everything um, in order so it can fire up the engine. So all these default settings look good here. I'm going to use the escape key and allows me to go and navigate my pane here a little, little bit easier. I'm going to go down to firing order setup. And then in here, we can see we can put in the firing order. Now, in this case, we have a 1342 firing order for an inline four cylinder engine. That's pretty standard for an inline four cylinder engine. Some inline four cylinders won't have the firing order as we're finding here of 1342. For example, a Subaru engine, that's a boxer engine, let's say a Subaru STI, that's gonna be a 1432 firing order, but the firing order we have in this case is correct for our K24 engine, so we can click OK here and then just keep moving on. We use our escape key, and we can see here bank cylinder setup. This would only be if you have a bank configuration, V6, V8, V10, V12, you'd go ahead and put your cylinders in here and being able to designate which cylinders are for a uh, bank one or which cylinders for bank two that's for bank to bank control so if you had two separate lambda sensors and trying to do closed loop operation it will differentiate between which bank it's controlling and the other so uh, let's use our escape key here engine decode thanks for checking out our teaser clip if you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current efi training we have to offer make sure you click right here if you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.